Let's start things off with a great story from right here in D.C. at a press conference at Ballou High School with Mayor Muriel Bowser. Pharrell Williams announced he is bringing his Something in the Water Festival to D.C. this year during Juneteenth weekend. We decided to take that solution to the highest platform we could find, and that is on our na on our on this nation's on our nation's capital, the National Mall, right there on Independence Avenue, three stages, and during the Juneteenth weekend. All right. Pharrell right. looked like he just dropped the grinding video. That man don't age. Grinding. No need to drive three hours to Virginia Beach this year. The party's coming to us. Now, Juneteenth is about to take the crown from the 4th of July in the hierarchy of summer holidays. The 4th of July might have fireworks, but it doesn't have Tyler, the Creator, Calvin Harris, and John Baptiste. Now, Pharrell moved the festival from Virginia Beach over the city government's, quote, toxic energy. And after his cousin, Donovan Lynch, was shot and killed by a Virginia Beach police officer who wasn't wearing a body camera. Now, this festival generated millions of dollars for Virginia Beach and went on largely without incident. Williams said the goal of the festival was to bring the community together, ease racial tensions, and bring about economic development opportunities. Now he's bringing all those things to D.C. So thank you for fumbling that million-dollar bag, Virginia Beach. One city's fail is another city's festival. There's also a very important lesson about how to respond to injustice in a way that actually evokes change. Emotional appeals is one thing. Money? Well, that's a whole nother matter. Your move, VA. Now, I'm tempted to sing happy, but I know some of y'all been sick of that song since 2013. I chose this next story, which is also out of D.C., because there's a menace on these city streets waging a reign of terror not seen since the likes of Wayne Perry. According to the Washington Post, a male wild turkey, why they always got to blame the males for that? Why are they always blaming us men? Anyway, a male wild turkey has been attacking people on the Anacostia Riverwalk Trail and has already sent one person to urgent care. Really, really wild turkey attacks. That wild turkey acting like people off wild turkey. DC already has too many carjackings and too much gun violence. Now we got a thug turkey on the loose, ruffling feathers out here living foul. This is for the birds who want all the smoke. Despite this one turkey acting like Omar from The Wire, his presence is actually a good sign that the wild turkey population is beginning to flourish after years of being on the decline. Now, yesterday I discussed a plan to introduce bears and wolves to the DC area to naturally keep the deer population in check. Bears and wolves, which of course obey all of our regulations in society. Looks like there's no need to send Thug Turkey and his friends after those deer. They will get the job done. And more importantly, I stand no chance against a wolf or a bear, but I think I can at least go a couple rounds with a turkey. Go on and try me, Big Bird. Thanksgiving dinner is going to be fresh and free this year when I get through with you these hands as an appetizer. Now we're headed to Capitol Hill for the latest update in the legal saga of the January 6th Capitol riot. Defendants, the lawyer for suspect Timothy Lewis Hale Cuccinelli wants to question potential jurors about their views on Adolf Hitler and Nazism, mainly because his client has an Adolf Hitler mustache and dozens of his co-workers have reported he was an admitted white uh, supremacist and Nazi sympathizer. Bruh, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Good luck finding a jury in D.C. that sympathizes with a guy in Fuhrer cosplay. Just look at him out here taking Hitler selfies. He had to take selfies because I can't imagine he had any friends that would condone that look. His whole legal defense is it is possible to be a white supremacist Nazi sympathizer and not want to overthrow the government. Now, while this is true in theory, Prosecutors have video footage and Hale Cuccinelli's own statements that show that he absolutely wanted to overthrow the government. So, well, you know, nice, nice try, baby Adolf. Let's take a trip to Minnesota for this last story, where state Senate candidate Aaron May Quaid gave a speech at a convention to secure her party's nomination while in labor and then left immediately to give birth. So believe me when I tell you, this is our moment to build our future together, to unlock the powerful, life-affirming, transformative kind of politics that means we can help achieve safe and stable communities.
create economic opportunity and prosperity, and safeguard our social building human rights, and strengthen our human and public infrastructure. Excuse me. Wow. Now, my wife gave some speeches while in labor, but none that would get her elected. I'm going to tell y'all right now, I will never be that strong. I can't carry a baby, but still, don't ever ask me to do anything remotely this intense. It's hard enough to hold a burp in until the commercial break. Sometimes. Y'all that watch the show, no, I don't actually hold it in. I just do it in the middle of the sentence. Women are superheroes. Also, she clearly really wants to win this election. It's messed up they didn't just go ahead and give her a pass. You couldn't give her a pass on making this speech so she could go straight to the hospital. They were dangerously close to witnessing the miracle of childbirth in person at work. Spoiler alert, that miracle is a messy one. Now, Erin May Quaid has to be considered the front runner in this race if she wasn't before, because it is hard to top. I went to work while having a baby. My favorite story, come on. Y'all know me well enough for that. You know it's Thug Turkey. After years of Thanksgiving, he's out for vengeance. The streets will run red with scratched up shins. 